the next thing is kind of uh well I was kind of getting into it. And I was wondering if I really wanted to dive back into it or not in terms of like this whole, this whole oh, topic geez. of like the female CS and all that, because there was that, there was a podcast that came up uh, where uh, there was like 20 people on it talking <laughs> about the female CS. Would you link to me to this? Cause here's the thing. I actually know the guy. It's the at CS out here podcast, which is of yeah. course, as a result, the branded podcast of not out here. One of those guys who does the tactics breakdowns on YouTube sure. and tutorials yeah. and stuff. And basically, um, one of the weird things about when I open this up, because this is where I know I'm a boomer. I'm not for this generation. First of all, as far as I can tell, it's just copied it off that train wrecks podcast that you've occasionally That's it. Seen yeah, Richard exactly. Famously. But I get the same reaction when I open this box as when I did see Richard occasion on that show, Richard, which would be this similar. You open a box and you see, right. So there's like, you know, some shit that like XQC slasher, like Destiny. It's all the fucking usual rogues gallery of morons from Twitch. Like this streamer, stupid woman who's just got big tits for some reason, mm -hmm. a guy of it. Like you just have all the obvious people that you'd expect, right? But then they'd just be like Richard Lewis in a box. You're like, well, wait a minute. One of these is not like the others. Like, why is he on there? Like this is a fucking drama. So in the same way, I open this up several, right? And I'm looking, it's like not nah, out here. Like fucking Heku, if you know, did a pretty uh -huh. good job on WePlay and stuff. There's like uh, uh, Aurora, the female CS Go player from Norway, I think it is. Yeah, yeah a bunch of people we know. There. I'm looking through, and then all of a sudden, just Anders Blue. <laughs> <just dead. laughs> it reminded me exactly of like seeing Richard. Like, what are you doing there? Like, it's like what down with the kids, man. Like, what are you? What are you? You're so out of. You're literal father like what are you your sort of place on this podcast Andy. you just see his little head his little ball fucking he's just there yeah i know and the best thing is as well if you actually know anders anders is someone who talks forever and you have to break in you have to break his floor you have to get in there so i can't i haven't watched all this show but i can't imagine does he just not say anything does he talk about are they all just enthralled by him? i don't know i'm, I'm actually intrigued now like i haven't actually in. watched the whole thing to be fair because it just brought to it's my a really long like, podcast to be fair well also i just can't imagine like I don't, I never got into the uh, the other one as well, like the Trainwrecks podcast, just because it's like I can't imagine a podcast with twenty people on That's it. That's the part I don't get. Like, look, you I'm know, not it's against like, the premise. It could be, be good. Like, I discuss am, the problem is, listen, as far as I know, some of the real reason they do that is because they're also all the people who get the drama views. And if you know, sure, the yeah. whole premise sort of is, if you have that many people, by default, people are going to argue and talk over each other, and then everyone's going to jump in and be shit. So I think I assume that's almost like the feature, not a bug. But I do, I do wonder for CS myself, like, because I have the vibe without watching it. I'm going to guess a lot of them just have to. To be silent most of the show so the other people can talk so it seems a bit weird as a premise to me you know that's exactly I mean, the that's, joke that's is the we've got only two it. people talking in you can barely get in well there were a couple of topics on it that brought in <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> Go on. but there's a couple of topics on there that i was like uh, okay and then there was just one clip the reason why it came on my radar well two reasons why it came on my radar one is because uh, there was a, there was a portion of it where they literally for five minutes in like a two-hour podcast they talk about trans players in uh in the female leagues what was the gist of what they say the, the gist, but the gist is, you know, like all 20 people, uh, including all the female, um, all the female competitors don't seem to have a problem with it sure. with, um, with, uh, well, trans, uh, trans women, I suppose, uh, competing in the league. Um, and so that already, I was just like, okay, interesting. So this is like five minutes out of a two hour thing. And they all agree, even though it's pretty much just like Heku who's talking. And I think goose breeder for a little bit. And then it's just, it's pretty much just Heku talking. Like it wasn't the female players per se taking point on it. It was Heku. So I thought that was a bit interesting because Heku's a chick. Yes, but she's not a player. She's a, she's a talent or she's, a, she, like she is basically okay. talent, right? So she wouldn't necessarily be playing against these players or with these players. She would just be commentating on it, but she did the majority of the talking in that segment. Maybe so they were that using that old rule that they like to apply of like, yeah, it's all about what body parts you do or don't have that allow your opinion to. No, no, no. They they claim okay. that it's because uh, females are marginalized. And I just so the joke it's actually, it's, it's, opinion, yeah. so it's, it's, Instead of it just being a female league now, now it's a marginalized persons league. So it, it, now it's they by doing wait that minute, they've opened minute. it up. Yeah, that, by that logic, what's so now like a Native American so man can anybody can join the league if that's going to be that's the, that, that was the, that was where I got yeah. confused about it too because I was just like, hold on. So if you're going to claim that the league is now it's not about female players, it's about marginalized people, then that opens it up to anybody. Like that, almost anybody could join the league at that point. Then if you could find one argument for being marginalized, then that's it. By by that logic, you can now join the league. It just completely defeats the purpose of having a female only league. Uh, so I, I don't get why they would even open that can of worms. But like the other one that popped up that that got into my uh, that got my attention on this one was Andrews talking about um, his take on mixed tournaments, and that was a clip that showed up on like the front page of Reddit there for a quick second. And uh, and that was one where I was like, oh man, Anders, no, because he's so the point that he makes, and this is a point that we made a lot over the past, and we've made this point repeatedly when it comes to teams of less skill playing against more skilled opponents. The whole point is 
well, you need to play up to the, you need to force your opponents to take you seriously. Like nobody's going to give you respect. Respect is earned. Right. And so you need to force them, uh, you know, otherwise you deserve to get knifed because you're not at that player's level. So you are the game going to clown on you. He's going to no scope you. He's going to clown on you. He's going to do whatever he wants until you force him to not be able to do yes. that. And he has to take you seriously. And now all of a sudden you have like air quotes, real CS, even though yes. it's all real CS. And so the point Anders makes is like, oh, you know, I wish that when uh, I wish that, uh, you know, when 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 female teams would be playing as male teams, that the male teams would take it a bit more seriously. And I'm just like, why should they, if this is competition, competition doesn't care about your gender or your sex or any of that. You take all that out of the equation. The co competition cares about whether you can win or not. And the point that we've made since the beginning, Anders and I, which is why it shocked me to hear him say this, is that you have to force your opponent to take you seriously. Like that's all, that's all it is to it. If he can get away with clowning on you, he is <coughs> going to get away with clowning on you. That's the whole point. Whereas, uh, you know, he's just winning. And if you can't stop him from winning, he can win however he wants to win. And so gender has nothing to do with it. Sex has nothing to do with it, right? It's all about just like whether or not you can win. And so I was just a little bit taken aback by that. I was a bit surprised that he would bring up that point that, you know, it's just like, oh, they should play down to the level of the females to have a more interesting match. And I'm just like, no, the, it's, it's, it's for the female players to step up in that case and, and force the males to take them seriously. There's, there's no short. Right, you want to get there. into this? Obviously, right, go for you it. know, fucking prepare the fireworks could get, could get spicy. First of all, when you say that latter part there, Samuel, yeah, I'm really shocked me in a call featuring loads of women, someone like Anders Bloom, not exactly the most fucking bald character in the world, is he? Someone like him might just end up coming up with the opinion, hey, maybe men should just change their behavior, eh, ladies? Hey, maybe they should just teach men not to beat women in scrims, eh? Am I right? Am I right? Any ladies? Any ladies? Any ladies like, agree? Come on, man. Like, that's essentially, by the way, there's a soft, like, panda version of it. I get what Anders means by that. What he means is there needs to be more, like, productive practice between men and women so that hopefully the women could improve. The problem with this is goes like this. One, because Anders isn't a woman, he doesn't have to care. Neither do the men in this case, and the male team have to care, like you're saying, Samla. If people don't know, spoiler, this isn't about sex. Like, I'll tell you something that's a secret. I've mentioned many times on League of Legends shows, but fans just forget it because it's not something that gets talked about in public. If you are a Western team in League of Legends and you go to Korea for the boot camp before Worlds, here's what happens, Samla. The Korean ah. teams will only give scrims to teams that, first of all, they think are good. So you have to be like the best Western teams. And if in those first scrims, they just destroy you and it looks like you're not in any way meaningful practice, they just don't give you any more scrims. That's it. You failed the first test, you're out. And what they'll do as a result, though, is if when they're playing those initial scrims, they start to beat you really badly, they will purposely disrespect you. They will do stuff like pick a losing matchup and shit on you in that lane or yeah. just like dive 24-7 early in the game in the most aggressive skill check, abusive way ever. They would never do in a pro match, but because exactly. they wouldn't do it in a pro match, but they're more skilled than you, they're just tormenting you. And in fact, you're not even getting anything out of the practice. You're just playing, getting blasted out of the server immediately in a way that would never happen. And you're just thinking, what the fuck is this? Well, what they're doing there, by the way, is there's a reason for it. They're not just being dickheads. Look, there's a level to which they are sort of showing you like, hey, these fucking Westerners think they're as good as us. They want to waste our time. Well, let's show them what happens when they waste our time. <laughs> They are doing that. But there's also another element where the reason they're doing that is to show, right, you are a waste of my time. I'm now going to go use my time more productively. I'm not going to practice against you anymore. I'm going to practice against the best like Chinese team or a team from Taiwan, who at least I know is a good practice partner. That's what the male team's doing. What they're doing is this, like, look, we're going to do you a favor. You've asked, and you're all even famous pros, maybe. Maybe we're just like tier three male semi-pros. You've asked us for a scrim. We've granted you the scrim. And you know what? We don't even have to play properly. We can buy like, what, M4, 2, four nines and just run around shooting you if we can do that why do we why should we respect you as a practice partner why should we play because by the way this is what we would do to low level teams if this was another bumfuck tier five team that we played of mills because there's no one in our scene le ready that's what you do when you, you go down to the level of who's available if we play them and their shit we're also going to dick around and we're also going to zeus you we're also going to knife you we're not going to play properly and spoiler why should we we're here for our practice look i get in the grander kumbaya sort of like let's grow as a the community kumbaya, yes. yeah i get it would be cool if everyone could do this but like I'll, all i'll say is this when does the impetus ever shift to women by the way what are women doing for men what are women doing to help the males get better in the scene what are women doing to help e male esports be bigger i, I missed something how are you directly because mm -hmm. here's the thing you're currently being to esports which you're going to say is merely no it isn't that's just esports you're in esports heck who's in esports she does interviews we're not saying you're only allowed in because you're a woman or not well no she's just in esports so the problem i have is this to me female cs players were always in esports similar so my issue they is they were this. there's 20 years of history of female esports with uh, CS. So I mean 
The problem with this topic is there's only two angles on it. One is men are just so mean and horrible that will never be allowed to be around the women. So the women have to be segregated into their own protected league, essentially like ESL Impact. And then in that league, they can just compete against each other for money. And then next step is question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. And the last step is women are as good as men and they become top pros in the end. Now, a lot of question obviously marks no one's, yeah, no, that, there's a lot of heavy lifting being done by the question mark, question mark, question mark line there, isn't there? Basically the entire mechanism because no one knows what it is. Now, the obvious issue is this isn't 2003, Samler. There have been mm. loads of women's tournaments that were women's only tournaments that were protected, that had loads of prize money, that had no prize money, that were in big countries, that were in small countries, that were online, that were offline, that were in every place in the world. And despite like 17, 18 years of those tournaments, it's made, or it's made effectively no impact. There are no male, female pros at the male level. There are no female teams at the male level. There aren't even, there isn't even one mixed team that's ever come vaguely close ever to being tier one. It's not, it's never even been a story that anyone could imagine. No one could even t- overhype it. There hasn't even been, by the way, something like in Overwatch where you have like a Korean player, like Gigori come along in which she has like sure. skills and at least she can play. There hasn't even been that. Even when they've been good women, they tended to stay in these female only circuits, female only teams, and they play there. In fact, the only reason some of them ever have played with men is they went to Valorant and in Valorant they have that game changer league which actually does I think mix doesn't it mix like some men with some women or so I think or maybe it's non-binaries only with women in that one as well some there's some scenario like that in Valorant where they have a tournament like this right so basically the gist of it is the obvious topic for people who actually want women to improve at games will always just be you've got to play against men because at the moment collectively they're better than you and as you say Sam it's not about men it's about the way you improve the fastest way always will be find someone who's better than you because they'll force you to improve the premise goes look you can do it another way like famously in Quake for example two players Fatality and Toxic were very unique that they would intentionally not practice against the best people they actually were guys who like to practice against the average level player and just beat him like robotically and sort of build up the patterns that's very unique though you have to be sort of like mm. self-motivated for that. that's the equivalent essentially to being a guy with a home gym like you if you're self-motivated it's brilliant you're going to be in there every day if you're a guy who's lazy you need a trainer mate you need a guy to tell you be here on Monday at 10 no excuses when you're here give me 10 more give me 10 more you need that guy like the more premises most people men included need the latter guy they need the person to push them so what the women really need if their goal key if another heavy lifting word there if their goal is be better at counter strike to the effect one day they could be at the male pro level then the only path as far as i can tell for most people that's incredibly self-motivated is to play against better opposition which will mean playing against men eventually and hopefully getting them to accept you into tournaments and gradually improve things the problem basically is the entire esl's impact circuit goes against that because it is the opposite is intentionally you don't compete against the men and you play in a separate tournament for money now it's not as simple as that obviously you could play ESL impact and you could be in the open qualifier for IEM Rio that you just won't make it through the qualifier that's why the other angle that Reddit never gets is everyone on Reddit's like why don't they just compete against the men they've been competing against the men the whole time yes it's there that have been no so rules keeping bad. them out they're, it's not that they're irrelevant it's that they're so bad they never make it far enough in the open qualifier for you to even even know they competed that's the joke yes. the joke is they get eliminated way before they would meet nip or something like they're not getting to play the, in fact the joke is every now and then they do actually meet like a famous team but they always get smashed just like and they then do they get 16 yeah, exactly. or 16 one exactly yeah. so the problem no, the, is that like, you just reminded me actually well, you just reminded me of a tweet that was uh, no but like sapphire when the whole drama was kicking off and how she she at first like unfortunately she's kind of shown that she's been infected by the mind virus in a way because she had this whole tweet where she's like at the beginning you know like i oh, trained it was I, yeah, yeah it was a fantastic tweet it pretty much highlights exactly how you would go about competing how you would be able to go yeah, ahead she and be like the first... about this topic she was on mixed teams she was playing at she was on hands. mixed teams she was, she was in, in the scrims she was, was constantly pugging with be the good. best in na she was grinding like she was there yes. every day yes. just with the guys and and she clearly clearly says it where she's like you know sex wasn't a thing for me like it didn't matter I just wanted to play against the best and compete against the best. And I'm just like, obviously that's kid. not a unique statement that a CS goal player could make, but she obviously meant like her actual physical sex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Get sex, gender, whatever. Like, <laughs> all right, go look up John money and then come back and talk to me. All right. So, but <laughs> I can, like Sapphire, like she lays it all out for like how I think. And so she lays it all out for how I think there will be eventually one, a girl who is going to be like that kind of player. Cause she's not going to care. The problem is now you're just erecting barriers for that player to, to, to make it happen because 
you you're, you're almost like making it so that you're putting up false signs that are that are giving false directions to uh, to the city. You're already on the road. If you're on that road, you're on the road that's going to get you to the city. But well, you have you all are. these other in, signs that are trying to it. branch in, you in off. In League of Legends, right? They made a term for it, Sam, because they wanted it to be that you know you start or you play, you can be in collegiate, then you can be in academy, then you can be in LCS. Okay. They call it path to pro. So the pre- it's the same premise. They want you to believe, Semler, that if you're a woman, this is what you do. You get good in the like game in like whatever, like pogs and face it. Then you get on a team and you play an ESL impact. Then you get good in ESL impact. And then one day, question mark, question mark. That's, that's the idea. Exactly. The, it's, question it's mark, question mark. To make yeah. it as a pro. Yeah, that's what they're implying, right? That that is well, that, yeah, exactly, and that's going to sidewind sidetrack you into a place where you're being you a cul de sac for a few artificially. Years, yeah. It's a cul de sac, exactly. You're yeah. going to get pulled off into a cul de sac, and you're not going to be able to continue to progress. The the point that the thought the, the thought experiment that I was running the other day is that I think that that generation, the generation that is in ESL Impact, that's as far as they go. I think that because they're in the cul de sac, they're no longer going to be pushing themselves in the crucible. They're no longer going to be in that competition where they're going to be playing against the best and going to be really trying to go head to head with the best. That's going to be the cul de sac, and that's where they're going to be staying. The real question is whether or not there's going to be uh, like a monacy level, like mon- like a monacy where it's like or a, a Brolan, you know, a girl who comes along and who just plays, you know, from like the age of three or something. You know, CSGO has been out long enough now where you can have young players like that where they'll have played it, you know, since like four or five or whatever with their brothers and they never stop playing it and they got obsessed and they just kept playing and they kept trying to go right like that'll be that and then you just have to hope that that player then doesn't get pulled off into one of the cul-de-sacs and keeps on that path because that will be the player like a brawl or somebody who comes up you know from a very young age and who's only played cs and who's obsessed with cs she's going to be the one to push forward and actually do it it's not going to be any of this generation who got side who got sidetracked in the cul-de-sacs that's the, that's that's personally what i think right now and like in terms of like the landscape the way it looks to me because there's too much there's too much money. There's like five, there's 500,000 in prize money. And there's a salary on top of that, right? You're getting a salary if you're on like CLG Red or one of these teams, right? You're getting paid on as well. So the incentives to just be there in that space are so high compared to the risk that frankly, everybody else has to take in that, you know, you have to go down that path. And then it's only the 0.001% of the player base that even gets to, to start making a salary, let alone making fat money, like a tier one team. So so, you know, like that's that's kind of like the lay of the land, the way that I see it right now. I feel like they're doing themselves a real uh, disservice or at least like and uh, to bring it all back around, you know, like the, the Anders take where it's like you sh- you sh- where you want your opponents to play down to your level. It's like, no, that's never been the case in competition. That's never been the case. Anything you you have to play against the best and you have to be you have to constantly be getting beaten so that you improve. And, you know, it, it sucks because right now the level, like you say, is so huge. That gap between the t- between average male <clears throat> it's teams, almost, it's almost professional as teams and the, and, the, and, the, and the top level elite level uh, female teams is so vast that, yeah, you are just getting destroyed. This is why, if you notice, I reframed it to not be sex. I did it as like a different region. So you could do the same thing. Imagine at the beginning of CSGO when it was NA pros against the top Europeans. Europe, you should just mop the floor with NA. There would be the odd NA team could make a That's run. That's true, yeah. Now imagine going to the, saying, I've heard in scrims, the Europeans are just humiliated them shouldn't they like play properly no why should they why am i why am i required and by the way spoiler in life in general watch out for this is a red flag when someone has a problem they have a problem they have a deficiency they're not good enough at something but their answer is everyone else has to change in the world to make them not feel as bad watch out for that that's almost never coming from a good place that's coming from a place of like resentment bitterness you don't want to like take responsibility for your own situation you don't want to have to do the hard things in life and overcome challenges you want just life to be handed to you on its over platter someone just go there you go sir there you go miss there's your counter-strike career nah because here's the thing you don't get given a counter-strike career Nico doesn't have a counter-strike career because someone will get along and went oh you appear to be a white male with a penis have a job he was he was the opposite he grew up in fucking bosnia a literal like war zone country as far as i know that was going through all sorts of turmoil at the beginning yeah. when count strike came out and he came along he battled through all of that he managed to get into international teams and became one of the best players ever what fucking handouts did he ever get what special league ever was set up to help this guy compete whoever came along and said oh be nice when you play against nico don't ever say anything mean no i didn't need it he just fucking pushed through you know why because he's a winner i always say this this is competition maybe this is what some of you don't get because it in some level it does seem to be an inherently male thing that we understand because it's a proxy for war this is the whole point is the reason why you go hard and it's serious and you go and you dedicate yourself to a silly video game is because this used to be training to actually go out into a field and die or make the other guy die for your territory and whoever wins goes and seizes the other territory and takes all the women children the area everything you're gonna lose everything that's why all that so when we 
play these games, it's supposed to be cutthroat. It's supposed to be really serious. You're supposed to be battling. You're supposed, they're supposed to be the enemy when you're playing them. You're not helping them. You're not here to help them out and help them get better. You're here to put your fucking boot on their neck and crush them and take everything from these motherfuckers. You're going to take their prize money, their spot in the tournament. You're going to take their best player if you need to. You're going to take their fucking salaries. That's what esports and life is. You go out there and you take. Now, listen, within that, when you're powerful, are you ready? Because Anders has actually nailed one thing that is key here, Mon Semler. Obviously, it's going to be really hard for the women to get way better. But if you wanted the, the practice to seem competitive, the fastest way is just mm. have the men play down to that level. Yeah, if you're strong, Anders has inadvertently lit, nailed one of the key principles of life. Only the strong can be compassionate in that way. Only the one who is mighty can actually show like fucking grace and clemency to the weak in this sense the person who's weak has no say in the matter like the person yes. who's the underdog has no say in how you play you you must just beg and beseech and just say please which by the way is why you always say please you don't ever like you did to me in Sembler, demand and say you must do this and if you don't i'm gonna just me you know then you're just a piece of shit like if you're the one who wants me to do something for you or to listen to you or to give you something to grant you something then ask politely because if you do that the saddest thing about that whole drama like i said in the past about where me and you were drawn into it is where people who are talking about because we actually care about this topic because as you you guys don't know this but as i said in that tweet that everyone was like how weird the way he phrased it like they've had a relationship with the women i have known female csgo players for 18 years i have a friend as i've referenced in the past who he gets tilted the face off the face of this fucking planet by this topic, Samler, because her name is Foxy. That was her alias. She was a Bulgarian pro player mm. in the early days of CS. What do you mean the early days, Thorin? That's right. 18 the to 17 days. years ago, you fox. She was doing what you think's just been invented this year. She was doing it. And because she has spent decades playing the game and watching these tournaments, Samler, she knew that you don't improve if you just play only with the women, that you don't improve if you only practice mainly and play with women, then you play the odd quality and get your head smashed in by men who aren't even pro. She knew that what you have to do is play with better players. It's why the occasional time you do get females getting respect is when they play in mixed team gathers and people are like, hey, they're actually pretty good. That's how yeah. you start to get going. And what happens with that player though is instead of being, hey, you're pretty good and you're on like a uh, male team as like the fourth best player, you want to be the superstar player of the female team and win the MVP award and get all that salary. So as similar says, you get brought back into the loop, even the one who is good enough to make it. So what happens in this particular scenario if you ask me is you have this setup where women are in this situation and basically she came along this foxy woman a few years back it was like it's like five six years ago now and she did a project called skilla it was written skill. I think it was S-K-Y-L-L-A or something. Go look it up. Basically, it was a project where it was a league that was an intentionally mixed league. The point was to find a way to encourage teams of men and women to play together. Specifically, are you ready? This is the detail people are not going to get. Specifically, to help the women. It wasn't for the men. They were already good at the game. These men were willing to take time out of their case and play with women who were good for the for a higher goal, you could say. Exactly sure. what these people want in these chats. Try and close the gap. Yeah, an aspirational reason. And they were going to do it. And this project had some legs to it. But you know what? Because esports is fraudulent as fuck. And this is not about actually helping women. It's not about women ever competing. Mm -hmm. It's not about any of that. It's just about nonsense, optics, and politics. That project barely got any support. That project, people weren't that even interested in playing much similar. A lot of them just stuck to saying there's female tournaments. And on top of it, all these walk fuckers and check marks, they've never heard of this tournament. They never mentioned this tournament. They don't care about this tournament. In fact, if you were to mention this tournament premise now, the joke is they would act like you're a bigot or something by trying to do it which then ties in obviously to this topic you started with of what do we do with people who identify themselves as transgender in this particular case specifically obviously the ones who they would say it depends what terminology they, they were born a male or assigned male at jet birth and then they claim now they are female they are a woman so they want to play, compete in the female slash women's league now the problem with this whole and then obviously there's the people who say well, I'm non-binary and for some reason in these spots that means probably along like you're saying because they're marginalised that means you automatically get lumped in with the women this means in this particular case now what i find weird about that is it, it's not that women are marginalized that they're worse at counter-strike like i hate to go back to the beginning of what started that thing at the end of last year that's not why they're not as good at counter-strike is it because one thing i've always found a really whack angle to this topic so it goes like this you know people go well there's nothing in the game that would mean that you know physically there'd be a difference so it must just all be no no whoa 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 whoa, whoa. what where did that sentence come from like uh-huh 
So there's no difference between me and simple physically when we play Counter Strike. I would guess there probably is. I'd almost be certain he has way better reaction times, maybe better hand eye coordination, can track pixels way better. It seems like there's loads of physical things. Then also, spoiler, are you just using your brain? Is your brain not in some sort of physical thing that exists in reality? Uh, there is a material like, component. Why there. are we pretending our brains are identical? I mean, spoiler, that in itself would be a ridiculous statement within the ideology of trans people, that our brains are all identically equal. That's, in fact, a fundamental principle they say is not the case. It's how they've built their entire ideology, similar. The whole premise, in fact, the main evidence they all link to is brain scans, isn't it? So that angle doesn't work already. So to me, I've never accepted the first part. So as a result, if I don't accept the first part, I find it really weird because I get what they mean. What they mean by the physical aspect is it's not like MMA. It's not like, because obviously the main problem with the MMA topic is it's... It, if someone phrases it like it's a man beating up women, that just sounds really fucking terrible, doesn't it? That's always going to sound bad. I mean, spoiler, watch, the women watch were those be, fights, women. man. I get, uh... I get the premise of what you mean. So what they're saying there is it's not a problem to have these transgender people come into the female league because, you know, it's not realized they're not beating them up. But the problem is if essentially there is any physical or genetic component to how good you are at video games, by the way, not the most important thing in life, then logically the male would have some sort or the transgender person would have some sort of advantage wouldn't they i don't necessarily know if that's the biggest deal myself because the joke here similar is if we let them do it they're actually inadvertently doing what we want which is getting them to play against men who might be better or people <laughs> who normally were men so technically it might even make the league better you could say that angle if i'm cynical but i'm just going to give you the real of that no 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 come on the real cynical thing and it's the same thing as the as the, the argument that i don't get the match like i've never heard that angle though. i thought this was all about just getting women to be better i don't get the angle that like because here's what i don't get about the angle like marginalized what's so, about how far are we going to go with this to like like does disabled people get to play in this league is that the new logic you know what i mean like well how if far that's are we the logic the, angle, the, yeah. the mad thing is, is that they all, 20 people all agree. They just nod and like move on to the next I know one. what you mean, similar, but we're going to be a bit more real on this podcast. Women naturally, first of all, tend to seek community-wise consensus. That's a massive thing you'll notice. And then secondly, well, they're generally, when they're in groups like that, more agreeable. I know it's well, how many? Weird. No, but how many are you? Are those? <laughs> it's like, the, it's the whole Leah Tom, Thompson, or Thomas uh, scandal going on with the swimmer. In, uh, in the in the states and all of like the team like the the team members who are coming out and at first it was uh, at first they were being um they were being anonymous right because obviously there's there's fear of uh, getting lashed out against if you do not uh, oh, of course if yeah. you don't follow the party line that's it you're going to be taken out of the picture comrades I mean it's the same sort of scenario here it seems like where you just it's just a radioactive topic and it seems like they're just going to let it happen because if they if they were to say like actually I don't feel comfortable in this situation they're just going to get ostracized and maybe got a term for you know, you. lose the chance of, of competing on their teams because they you know, don't follow you know, along. parallel thinking where someone comes up with the same idea, but they just don't do it. Like they do it separately. And so they have a different name for it. I actually, it turns out invented this concept that was already exists. I call it an electric fence, which is like a thing that you're not allowed to talk about. Cause it's the idea is when you try touching it once you get shocked. So you're like, sure. only do you not talk about, but then everyone sees you get shocked. And like, I'm not fucking touching that. Exactly. Like, it actually is a term for it. It's called third rail topic. Cause it's like for like, you know, trains where there's one electric rail. If you touch that one, you die don't you so the premise is this is the third real topic because the idea is it's not even that you have to like there's one official opinion that you're allowed to express any other opinion is not allowed to be expressed it's not that you can just disagree no no that's it to disagree is itself the transgression so the problem in this particular case basically is if you ever address this particular topic it's just verboten. You're not allowed to see it. So the problem is similar. Essentially, I could have already told you before I watched that clip. At the end, they will all just agree. This is not only fine. It is a good thing. Because here's the thing. Think about what they're basing it off similar. They're not basing it, like you say, off like, will it, it like, are they actually, essentially, are we, are we actually saying they are women? That's not even the discussion they had, it turns out. It's not even that controversial a discussion. They're not saying, like, will this help women or men get better? Those aren't questions. All they're basically saying, because they said marginalized similar, is this. I feel so Sorry for these people. So don't you agree that wouldn't we all be nice people if we agreed to help these people we feel sorry for? That's a pretty easy sentiment to sell. And you're selling it to a bunch of women who are going, oh, yeah, oh, I feel bad for them. Yeah. Because what I've never understood about this is, right, in that particular case, if you're saying there's no difference in terms of why women and men should be equally as good between men and women, then why would it be a problem for the transgender person to just keep playing with whoever they were playing with before? Why would that be an issue? Logically, there's no issue in the brain, so... To just keep competing, right? In this case, I guess the logic's going to be, which is actually does tie into our situation. If you remember what we got claimed, 
the, t- the logic would be, that's why they say marginalized similar, their logic would be, oh, but if you identify publicly as trans or non-binary, you know, the male players will be mean but, to you. The whole narrative is that that's it's a what toxic I think scene that's re- yeah. that's, that is a suppressing again. Coming back female to players and, uh, and non-binary, yes. whatever, uh, what, marginalized players, you know, it's a toxic scene that's holding yes. them down when in fact it's holding everybody down. We always down. look I mean, back to that spirit. topic, you'll notice. It's basically the number it, one thing. I mean, by the way, I, one of the reasons why they do it is because it's not totally unfounded. Obviously, when you have enough men in the world and scale it up and women, people are going to be arseholes to each other. It's going to happen. The problem is, as you know, and which is why me and you spoke out about this, they take that what is a, a fairly tiny fraction. It's definitely not like the esports industry people, and they make it sound like the entire scenes like that were all yes. just women down. Old, but that's 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 the common strategy on all sorts yes. of different it's topics where you take the extreme and use that as the norm. And it's like, no, that's not, you know, you can't argue for this one thing over here using an extreme example and then claim the whole thing is like that. It's not that's not how it's supposed to go, but that's constantly. Yes the same thing across all sorts of different it appeals to emotion in this particular case you know you feel sorry for people you are oh, someone being marginalized and they're different from others so they get talked about in this case the, the reason i find it weird though the reason i find it really weird it's just demeaning is, for the women though that's what i was going to say if you think okay, about it yeah, Samuel, okay. the joke here is this is like some sort of mad angle where you've horseshoe theoried your way all the way from uh, totally anti-man to all the way back to like you're like the ancient Greeks now who are like oh uh, what is he like crippled or weird just put him with the women and the other fools yes exactly it's like what are you do- the joke is like, to burn you the demean yourself in the process yeah, exactly. it's such a weird thing your logic is like oh these non-binary people are getting bullied nah put, fucking put them with the women like they're all shit anyway <laughs> just let them play together so that just to put them in that crash away from everyone they can't they can't be they can't play with the big boys they'll get knocked over it's like what the fuck you, you guys <laughs> you don't believe exactly they can it. come beat what the hell I, that's what's so mystifying about it, because if you take two seconds to think about it, it's like that is incredibly demeaning, right? Because now you're just saying, what is it? The the, the soft bigotry of lowered expectations that you've applied to yourself now as well. Or it's like you're just not ca- like you're you're somehow indirectly admitting that you're just not capable enough to, to to compete with others. Like, what the fuck? You need to be put off in your own little space and then put everybody else there, too. It was such a weird. I, I don't know. That really caught me off guard with, when when uh, when that was the logic behind it. Um, See, another thing I get pissed off by some is I notice people even sometimes say girls in these arguments as if to like intentionally make you think of like a more innocent, like, oh, I just want to play Counter-Strike. Sure. Like, <laughs> here's the problem I have. You know, most of these people are like 23-year-old women in like the modern world who've been told, like, I'm just as good as you and equal and I'm just, I don't need a man. I'm bold and strong. And Well, then have at it. Have at it, my dear. <laughs> Go ahead and play. You're an adult female woman. Can't, can't you compete? Now, here's the thing. One area, and this is going to be a thing I'm going to push for the rest of my time in esports. One area I actually think the stupid people on that side have done themselves and their own people a massive disservice is push the stupid idea that women are equally as good as everyone and all independent and don't need anyone's help and can do it all by themselves. Because, spoiler, nobody can do it all by themselves. Men can't do it all by themselves. Men need each other. Men need support networks. Men need men. Men need women. We all need each other and we all need a community a scene support we need people we can go to and like, who are in like our, in our support group of people personally who can deal with our issues we need people professionally who can set up things we need obviously systems to create like tournaments everyone needs everyone like the idea you can just do it on your own that's a losing path for anyone in the game like if you're a woman don't think that like if you can find some way that helps you if you can find a system that helps you improve if you find a group of people who want to help you improve that's who you should want to work with so that whole thing that's why the whole thing to go back to the topic of what happened with me and you at the end of last year the stupidest thing is this there's a very small group of people who aren't cynically in this for money and optics who actually care about this topic and it's people like me and Semler who've known the women who've been bashing their head against the ceiling of the female tournaments for over 10 15 years they've just shown they have proven it doesn't work it's specifically because one, a point I said earlier that everyone gets lost on, it's not one or the other. It's both and. It's not either they compete in the female-only tournament or they compete in the male things. The whole time they've been competing in the qualifiers for the male things, they're not good enough to make it. In fact, the joke is this similar. If ESL Impact worked, we would know it worked because by playing in it, they'd eventually qualify into the other tournaments anyway. Spoiler, that'll probably never happen because instead, I imagine they keep trying the equal amount they currently do for the male tournaments, but then they put more time into the female tournaments. So it's actually, like you said, taking hours away from the potential improvement. 
That, and that that has to be because sometimes be. sometimes I'm reading these comments and it seems to me like like the commenters are living in this world where they think there are rules that are holding the women back like as if there's rules written out they in, actually in the tournaments they, that say like oh female teams need you know not, when they say that thing as a, a, they try to say it as a witty line you know when you said when are the male only tournaments and they go what do you mean all of them were male only then you're an objective fucking moron because in the open <laughs> qualifier, literally women completed, you fucking imbecile. So how could that be a male-only tournament? The problem they have isn't that the, at the end of the tournament, Emily, they weren't like, right, we've got the 16 teams. Oh, sorry, actually, I see a female team. Yeah, there's a female team here. here. Actually, take, take that one out. out um, take the 17th yeah. team. And put, no, what they do is they go, oh, you didn't qualify so because I'm a woman. No, it's because he didn't finish top 16, you fucking idiot. That's how the qualifier works. You know, the joke is if you'd finish top 16, we couldn't give you out. You'd have to be in the tournament, wouldn't you? So, you yeah, that, that entire premise is so infuriating. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's no rules that say that women can't compete in all these tournaments. There's only rules that go the other way, which, you know, again, there's kind of like this, this whole point that we were talking about. Want to see more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content? Well, subscribe to this channel then, or, you know, be a pleb and don't.